By the way, there are some cases. So, I mean, we can say that the virtual world principle says that the solution of the continuum mechanics problems corresponds to the minimization of a functional, okay, according to that, because it, is, it establishes that the Gato derivative of this functional is equal to zero. But in fact, this functional, in principle, we don't know, excepting in, an, in some cases. There are cases in which we can go a, a step beyond that and say that then the virtual world principle and then the solution of the continuum mechanics problem is the minimization of a functional that we know. Okay? Not always, eh? not always. Now I'm starting to work about, about restriction. Okay? So, so far this is completely general. Now, restrictions. Let's consider that we have a linear elastic material. So that the stresses, the stresses can be obtained as a differentiation of some elastic potential with respect to the strains. There is a mistake here. Okay? That's a restriction. It's an elastic and being more general, there is a family that we have in the state of hyperelastic problems in which the stresses are obtained as the derivative of the potential of the an elastic potential with respect to the stress. Second, assume a quasi-static problem. The accelerations are zero. And on top of that, that the volume forces are come from a potential. That's when they say that they are conservative volume forces. So there is a potential, phi of u, whose derivative with respect to u is minus rho times v. Okay? And then let's assume that the, that the, the surface forces, t, t, are also conservatives. So they, can, they come for a potential g, so the derivative of g with respect to u is equal to minus t. So these are three limitations, right? The first limitation is that we have elastic material. Second, that the body forces, that the, there are no accelerations and the body forces are conservatives. And third, that the uh, surface forces come from a potential too. Okay? Are these very strong limitations? Well, that one could be strong limitations, quasi-static problems, linear elastic problems. This one is quite general. You know, gravitational forces are always, are, are, are always a potential. Okay? So that's not a problem. This, well, in this, pro, in, 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 in this case, most of the cases in solid mechanics problems, we can find a, a solution like that. For instance, we said the potential G is equal T times U, the derivative of G with respect to U is equal minus T. Right? So this is the potential. Well, this is the potential excepting is the, if the external actions depend on the displacements. If the t's star depend on u, then this cannot be stated anymore. Okay? So in what case, what, what is a typical case in which the external forces depend on the displacement? Hydrostatic, for instance. I mean, the hydrostatic forces are always normal to the surface. So, if the surface changes, the direction of the forces change. So, they are follower forces. Of course, if we are in a small displacement theory, this change is negligible. So, in that case, in a small displacement, the hydrostatic forces would be, uh, uh, would be conservative forces or would be uh, pot have a potential. But in large displacements, large displacements theory, that's not the case. In a dam, we cannot consider large displacements because displacements in a dam are small. But imagine a submarine, for instance. We were involved in the design of a submarine and we want to study the collapse of a submarine. Then in the collapse of a submarine, the forces that produce the collapse, which are hydrostatic forces, then in the collapse, when the displacements of the submarine are very large, could be follower sources. So this is not applicable. Okay? And another case, very important for us, wind forces. 
the forces produced by wind are always supposed to be normal to the wall in which they act. If by any reason that, which is not normal, I mean, that's not, in civil engineering, that's not very normal. But in other cases, that could be. In civil engineering, wind acts on rigid structures whose displacement are very, is, uh, displacements are very small, so, I mean, the, the, the direction of the forces doesn't change. But it eventually, it would be a large change of the wall on which the wind acts, the direction of the forces, of the wind forces, which are pressures normal to the wall, would change. So in other words, hydrostatic forces and wind forces are not, in principle, in principle, are not uh, conservative. I mean, are not, uh, they are, fo are, are follower forces. But in the small strains cases, in infinitesimal strains, they can be considered uh, uh, non-follower for forces. So, let's say that these restrictions in civil engineering are not very important restrictions. Be why? Because in many cases, we'll work in elastic material, okay? So this is true. Then the displacements are small and gravitational forces in quasi-static problems. So in quasi-static problems, elastic, quasi-static, elastic problems in the small strains, this is fulfilled. But in other cases, it's not, okay? Well, why do I say this hypothesis? Because this hypothesis allow just finding out what is this functional that we don't know in general? Okay? What is this functional? What? It turns out to be that. So if we know the elastic potential as a function of the strains, typically in smaller strains theory, the elastic potential was written as one half of epsilon C epsilon, right? If we put that and integrate that, if we put this potential for the body forces, minus rho b here. And we do put the potential of the energy forces here, okay, if you do that, then, look, we obtain something here, and we now, and that's considered this as a functional. At the end of the day, this is a functional because this is, an is, is a mapping that for every displacement, return the integral, uh, 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 return a scalar, a real number, which is the integral, integral of the linear, of the elastic potential, plus the integral of this uh, force, body force potential, plus the integral of this energy, uh, boundary forces potential. So this is, this is, a, let's say, a functional, okay? What is the Gateau derivative of the functional? What is the Gateau derivative of the functional? Okay, let's see. To find the Gateau derivative, I have to differentiate this with respect to epsilon and multiply by, I mean, I'm just using the simplified version of taking Gateau derivative. It's like differentiating, right? Like differentiating. So I differentiate u with respect to epsilon, which provide what? The stresses times the differential of epsilon, but this differential is the virtual strains. So it's the symmetric grain of delta u. So it's a virtual strain. Plus the derivative of phi with respect to u times delta u. What is the differential of phi with respect to u? Look, is minus rho b. So that's minus rho b times delta u. Plus the derivative of j with respect to u times delta u. What is the derivative of j with respect to u? Minus t. So minus t times delta u. So, the Gateau derivative of this functional u turns out to be the expression of the virtual world principle. So, in that case, I can say that I know what is the functional for which the virtual world principle states that the solution of the problem finds a local minimum. What is the functional? This one. What is this functional Unity is energy. So this is an elastic, en elastic energy, and the, uh, the elastic energy per unit of volume, if I integrate that on the volume, I obtain an elastic energy. The elastic energy of all the elastic bodies. What is that? The integral of the body forces 
potential is the potential of the body forces. And this is the potential of the energy surfaces, energy of the surface forces. So finally, all this is a potential. A potential which includes the elastic energy, the potential of the body forces, and the potential of the surface forces. And what can we say in this situation? Then we can say, through this one-to-one -one connection of virtual world principle and solution of the problem, we can say that the solution of the problem, the elastic problem with potential forces, the solution of the problem, the elastic solution of the problem is a minimum of the potential energy. So is that that displacement, that the solution in terms of displacements, uh, is these displacements that make the total potential energy an extreme, a maximum or a minimum of the potential energy for all that's important. Well, an extreme, the, the word extreme includes all for all directions, right? So that makes an extreme, and that's it. And it can be also proven that this is a minimum. This extreme is not a maximum, it's a minimum. So we can say that following principle, the principle of minimization of the potential energy. In cases in which this is applicable, in which we can obtain that potential, which is the potential of the, 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 the uh, elastic potential integrated of the volume, plus the potential, the potential for the body forces. Okay? Look, this A shouldn't be here in that case, unless, unless we can talk the, these acceleration as constants. If these accelerations are constant, then it would be. Minus the accelerations, minus the, 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 this potential here, if these are not follower forces, then in this case, we can say that the solution of the problem is a minimum of that potential energy of the body. Okay? That potential energy. This A here should be removed. Okay? At least A as a function of U. If A is constant, that's valid too. Okay? Otherwise not, because by differentiating that with respect to U, there will be a differential of A. So this, this U here uh, is, it should be removed. Okay? And, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That's it. It's the end. That's the end of our story. I would like just to devote five minutes to recall what was this story. The story is called Continuum Mechanics. Continuum Mechanics that we intended just to provide you with some additional information on what you already, in some cases, you already know, that is, again, telling you why those things that you already knew were as they were, okay? So you, you know, not, not, probably you don't know many additional things. You know why. And you know the limits, the limits of applications of many of those things that you already know, okay? You also know where is the physics before these formulas that sometimes you have been taught with not deep, uh, going deep into the physics of it, okay? And then, where is the distinguishable part of solid and fluid? Essentially, the constitutive equation. A fluid, a solid, and a gas is a continuum medium, which the, 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 the substantial difference is the, continu the constitutive equation, okay? And finally, last but not least, you are seeing the way of connecting the partial differential equations that provide the solution of these problems in solid mechanics, in fluid mechanics, you have been, through this last chapter, we have been able to connect them with variational principles, which is the connection, in turn, with another, this, another subject, which is computational mechanics. I hope that, more or less, you have achieved that. At this point, uh, I think in these respects, you are now at the same level than students coming from other lines and entering into the master 
as, as opposed to no. So, and this is the goal of this subject. So, thanks for your attention and good luck.